we now come to deductions from gross total income under chapter VIA under chapter 6A. First we look at certain general principles. The aggregate amount of deductions from gross total income cannot exceed the gross total income. Therefore, total income cannot become negative on account of these deductions. Deductions from gross total income are not allowed from the following incomes. Basically, these are the incomes taxable at a special rate. Number one, capital gain which is other than normal short term capital gain. That means short term capital gain under section 111A and long term capital gain under section 112A or 112. 111A taxable at 15%, 112A 10%, 112% 20%. In the case of winnings and thirdly on undisclosed income under section 68 to 69D. So first we will cover the deductions for investments which are covered in ATC, ATCCC and ATCCD. So first we look at section ATC which is on account of specified payments or deposits. Who is the eligible SSE? Individual or HUF. The maximum deduction allowed is 1,50,000 in respect of specified payments or deposits. What is permissible as a deduction? Some paid or deposited in the previous year by the SSE. So deduction is allowed on payment basis, not on due basis. So we will look at these specified payments or deposits one by one. First is on account of life insurance premium. The insurance should be on the life of either self or spouse or the child in the case of individual or member of HUF in the case of an HUF SSE. Now deduction is allowed up to a specified percentage of sum assured. Up to a specified percentage of sum assured. Date of issue of policy. If it is on or before 31st March 2012, then deduction under section 80C is allowed for premium paid up to 20% of sum assured. Where policy is issued during the financial year 2012-13, then deduction is allowed for premium paid up to 10% of minimum sum assured. 20% comes down to 10%. The position on or after 1st April 2013. Two situations. Where the insured is a person with disability or severe disability referred under section 80U, or suffers from disease or ailment specified under ATDDB, then the percentage is 15%. The deduction is allowed up to this extent. In case of any other insured, the deduction is for premium paid up to 10%. So a lower amount of 10% is prescribed. Now a lock-in period of two years is prescribed in this respect and we will look at the lock-in periods in some time. Second, Deferred annuity plan. Deferred annuity plan is covered under ATC but not covered in number 11. What is number 11? Payment to annuity plan of the LIC or any other insurer. That is covered separately but what is not covered there is covered here. Deferred annuity plan. Contract should be on the life of whom? Self, spouse or child in the case of an individual and contract should be non-commutable. Right? Number three, the sum deducted from the salary for securing a deferred annuity for a government employee only is allowed as deduction. Now, sum may be deducted for securing deferred annuity to individual SSE or making a provision for his spouse or children. There is a limit. The deduction is limited to 20% of salary. Fourth, contribution to statutory provident fund is allowed ATC deduction. And this is only for employees contribution. Number five, contribution to recognized provident fund. And this is only for employees contribution. Employees contribution to unrecognized provident fund is not eligible for ATC deduction. Sixth, contribution to PPF. And the contribution should be to the account of self, spouse or child in the case of individual or member of HUF in the case of an HUF. Seventh, contribution to approved superannuation fund. And deduction is for employees' contribution. Employees' contribution to unapproved superannuation fund is not eligible for ATC deduction. Eighth, deposit in Sukanya Samriddhi account. And the deposit should be in the name of either the individual or any girl child of that individual or any girl child for whom such person is the legal guardian. Ninth, 
subscription to national savings certificate nsc 8th issue or 9th issue now what we need to note is the accrued interest except for the last year accrued interest is deemed to be reinvested and therefore it is also eligible for deduction under atc 10 contribution to ulip unit linked insurance plan 1971 of uti unit trust of india or ulip of lic mutual fund now the contribution should be in the name of self spouse or child in the case of individual or member of huf in the case of a huf as far as ulip of lic mutual fund is concerned it should be notified and a lock-in period of five years has been prescribed we will look at this shortly number 11 payment to annuity plan of the lic or any other insurer and the annuity plan should be notified 12 subscription to units of a mutual fund or uti the scheme should be notified 13 contribution to pension fund of a mutual fund or uti the pension fund should be notified what we need to note is pension fund of lic or any other insurer is covered where under section 80 ccc pension scheme of central government that is nps or atal pension yojana apy is covered where under section 80 ccd 80 cc covers what pension fund of a mutual fund or uti number 14 subscription to national housing bank tax saving term deposit scheme 2008 number 15 subscription to deposit scheme of a housing authority or housing finance public sector company and the scheme should be notified number 16 covers tuition fees and tuition fees should be paid to what to any university college school or other educational institution situated within india not outside india it should be for the purpose of full-time education not part-time education of what there is a limit of any two children of the SSE, not beyond two children. Deduction is not available for what? For development fees, donation or similar payment. Number 17. If certain specified payments are made for what? For purchase or construction, not for any other purpose. Of what? Of residential house, not for a non-residential house. And the condition is that income from such house property should be taxable under the head IHP and therefore it includes a self-occupied property as well. What are the specified payments? 1. Payment under a scheme of any development authority, housing board, etc. 2. Payment to a company or cooperative society of which the SSE is a shareholder or member towards the cost of the house property allotted to him. Right? So payment of installments in cases 1 and 2. 3. Repayment of amount that has been borrowed from whom? from either the government or bank or life insurance corporation, national housing bank, housing finance company, etc. So that repayment of principal is covered here. Fourth, stamp duty, registration fee and other expenses for what? For transfer of house property in the name of the SSE is covered. There are certain payments which are not deductible under section 80C. One, admission fee, cost of share and initial deposit for what? For becoming a shareholder of a company or member of a cooperative society. Number two, cost of any addition, alteration, renovation or repair of house property is not deductible under 80C. Carried out after the issue of completion certificate or after the house property has been occupied or is let out. Number three, interest on capital borrowed which is deductible under section 24 in computing income under the head, income from house property. A lock-in period of five years is prescribed which we will note in some time. This is a snapshot. Nature of property and capital is borrowed for what purpose? Whether the property is residential or non-residential and capital is borrowed for purchase, construction, repair, renewal or reconstruction, interest is deductible under section 24B in computing income under the head IHP. But ATC deduction is available only on account of principal where the property is residential and capital is borrowed for purchase or construction. It is not available in other cases. Next, number 18. Subscription to equity shares or debentures or units of a mutual fund. The condition is that the subscription should be made in an eligible and approved issue of capital by a public company or a public financial institution. And a lock-in period of three years has been prescribed for what? For shares and debentures. 
19 term deposit with the bank but it should be for 5 years or more 20 subscription to bonds of nabad and the bond should be notified 21 deposit in the senior citizen saving scheme a lock in period of 5 years has been prescribed 22 deposit in 5 year 5 year post office time deposit scheme potd a lock in period of 5 years has been prescribed and finally number 23 contribution to tier 2 nps account now nps account has a tier 1 account which is which is the individual pension account and tier 2 account which is the additional account contribution to tier 1 account is eligible for deduction under ATCCD in the case of all individuals but ATC covers contribution to tier 2 NPS account but uh, the ATC is available only when such contribution is by a central government employee not any other employee and the contribution should be for a fixed period of 3 years or more now we come to the lock-in period which have been specified and as you can see column 1 refers to the serial number in the table of the above that we discussed what should be the default that means uh, within the lock-in period and then what are the implications as far as life insurance policy is concerned the default is that the policy terminates or ceases to be in force when within two years after commencement of the policy if it is a case of a single premium policy premium is only paid once and the policy terminates or ceases to be enforced within two years after commencement in other cases where uh, the policy terminates or ceases before premiums are paid for two years so two years is the lock-in period number 10 of the table was a case of ULIP 1971 of the UTI or notified ULIP of LIC mutual fund in that case what is the default ULIP terminates or ceases before contributions are paid for five years so five years lock-in period number 17 was purchase or construction of residential house property specified payments made what is the default the property is transferred before the expiry of five years from the end of the financial year in which possession is obtained so five years is the lock-in period in these cases what are the implications in the current year no deduction and is allowed under section 80c for the sum paid in the current previous year so in the current previous year no deduction is allowed under section 80c but what about the deduction under section 80c which have been allowed in the preceding previous years so the aggregate of deductions under section 80c which have been allowed for preceding previous years is deemed to be the income of the current previous year and therefore it becomes taxable in the current previous year so that means 80c deduction allowed earlier is effectively reversed or clawed back in the case of equity shares or debentures which we noted above where subscription is made in an eligible and approved issue of capital in that case there is this lock-in period of three years where shares or debentures are transferred within three years from the date of acquisition then the deduction under section 80c which was allowed in the preceding previous years is reversed it is clawed back finally in the case of senior citizen saving scheme or five year post office time deposit scheme what is the default the amount and this includes the interest accrued that amount is withdrawn before expiry of five years from the date of deposit what happens the amount so withdrawn is deemed to be the income of previous year of withdrawal and therefore it becomes taxable now in this situation what we need to notice that as far as the principal withdrawn is concerned it is taxable it becomes liable to tax but there is an exception where it is received on death where it is received on death the amount is withdrawn it is not taxable as far as interest accrued which is withdrawn is concerned it is liable to tax if it was not taxed earlier but if it was taxed earlier say on due basis or accrual basis then it will not be taxed again upon withdrawal because double uh, taxation of the same amount is not permissible section 80 triple c covers contribution to a pension fund the deduction is available to an individual and the maximum deduction is rupees one lakh fifty thousand now this covers contribution to a pension fund of the LIC or any other insurer which is referred to in section 1023 AAB. So LIC or any other insurer basically. And there are two categories. 
where the amount is paid or deposited in the previous year by the SSE. To what? To any annuity plan in such pension fund for receiving pension from such fund. So uh, contribution is to the annuity plan for receiving pension from such pension fund. Then the deduction is equal to such amount up to a limit of rupees 1.5 lakh. Right? But this excludes interest or bonus if it is accrued or if it is credited. So basically the amount which is paid or deposited is allowed as deduction. Now this amount on which ATCCC deduction has been allowed, has been allowed, it may be received by the SSE from the fund or by his nominee together with interest or bonus. Now in such case the amount may be received in two situations where say the annuity plan is surrendered in the previous year or pension is received from the annuity plan. In both these cases, the amount which is received is deemed to be the income of the SSE in the year in which the withdrawal is made or the pension is received and is accordingly taxable in that previous year. ATCCD, it covers contribution to pension scheme. Which pension scheme? The new pension scheme NPS or Atal Pension Yojana APY. Deduction is allowed to an individual and maximum deduction is of a specified percentage of salary or gross total income. ATCCD covers amount paid or deposited in the previous year in the account of the SSE under the notified pension scheme. Where the SSE is employed by an employer, that means in the case of an employee and in any other case. In the case of an employee, the contribution may be made by the employer as well as the employee. Both are eligible for deduction under ATCCD. As far as employer's contribution is concerned, it is first included in the income under the head salaries and then ATCCD deduction is allowed. And there is a limit to such deduction. What is the limit? 14% of the salary in the previous year in the case of a government employer, whether central government or state government, and 10% of salary in the previous year in the case of any other employer. This is ATCCD2. So employer's contribution ATCCD2. What about the contribution of the SSE employee? That means the employee's own, con own contribution. Deduction is allowed under ATCCD1. And what is the limit? Up to 10% of the salary in the previous year. In addition to ATCCD1 for employee's contribution, an additional deduction is allowed under ATCCD1B of up to rupees 50,000. Right, but on that contribution on which ATCCD1 deduction has not been allowed. So for the same amount ATCCD1 and ATCCD1B cannot be claimed. So as far as the employee SSE is concerned, employer's contribution allowed up to what? 14% of salary for government employee and 10% of salary in the case of other employees. As far as employee's own contribution is concerned, ATCCD1 up to 10% of salary plus an additional deduction ATCCD1B up to 50,000 provided that the same amount is not deductible under both the provisions. So if the deduction has been claimed on an amount under ATCCD1 on the same amount ATCCD1B cannot be claimed. What about a non-employee? That means in any other case ATCCD1 deduction is allowed so in this, in this case, employer will not contribute, only the SSE will contribute. ATCCD1 is allowed and it is up to 20% of gross total income in the previous year. Plus an additional deduction of ATCCD1B in the same fashion as that for an employee's own contribution, which is up to 50,000. So in the case of a non-employee, that means basically a self-employed person, ATCCD1 plus ATCCD1B. Now, what is the meaning of salary? Salary includes DNS allowance, but if the terms of employment so provide, that means if it forms part of salary for computing retirement benefits, but excludes all other allowances and perquisites. Now, deduction under section 80 CCD 1B, that is additional deduction of 50,000, is allowed whether or not 80 CCD 1 deduction is allowed, right? But to avoid double deduction, it is allowed only on that contribution on which 80 CCD 1 has not been allowed. Now there is an overall combined limit on deductions under section ATC, ATCCC and ATCCD which we have discussed so far and this is by virtue of section ATCCE. So ATC we saw that the limit is 1,50,000, ATCCC 
we saw that the limit is 150000 right and as far as atccd is concerned we saw that there is atccd 1 1b and 2 right atccd is 1 atccd 1 is for what it is for sse's contribution for nps or apy sse's contribution in the case of a salaried employee the limit is 10% of salary for a self employed person it is 20% of gross total income and then there is additional deduction of 50000 under section 80 ccd 1b which can be allowed for sse's contribution and then under 80 ccd 2 deduction is for employer's contribution in the case of an employee and what is the limit 10% of salary or 14% of salary in the case of a government employer now ATCCE provides that the limit of deduction combined for ATC, ATCCC and ATCCD1 will be 1,50,000. So combined deduction for all of these three cannot exceed 1,50,000. But this limit does not apply to ATCCD1B where the limit remains at 50,000 independently it can be claimed. Similarly for employer's contribution to NPS or APY ATCCD2 also it, the limit remains uh, independent of uh, section 80 CCE. We will now look at the theme for deductions for health and wellness ATD, ATDD, ATDDB and ATU. Section 80D covers health related expenditure. It is allowed to an individual or HUF. The maximum deduction for each category can be either 25,000 or 50,000. So SSE can be an individual or HUF. The person for whose benefit the payment is made in the case of individual can fall in two buckets. Bucket one, self, spouse or dependent children. Children who are not dependent are not covered. A spouse can be dependent, may not be dependent, may be dependent, it doesn't matter. Bucket number two covers parents. May be dependent, may not be dependent, it doesn't matter. For HUF, payment should be in respect of any member of the HUF. Okay. Now what are the payments that are covered for the deduction under ATD categories 1 and categories 2 two categories in category 1 three types of payments are covered health insurance premium covered 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 contributions made to the central government health scheme or CGHS covered payment made on account of preventive health checkup covered and covered not covered in case of HUF so we figure out the amounts of these three payments under category 1 and then we aggregate and what is the limit of deduction in respect of this category 1 for bucket 1 for individual bucket 1 self spouse and dependent children the overall limit is 25000 similar for parents okay so 25000 for bucket 1 and 25000 for bucket 2 but if the health insurance premium health insurance premium is paid for a person who is a senior citizen right for a senior citizen then an additional deduction of 25,000 is allowed both in case of bucket 1 as well as bucket 2 the similar is the position for HUF the general limit of deduction for category 1 for HUF is 25,000 but in case health insurance premium is paid for a senior citizen additional 25,000 is allowed so 25,000 is the maximum cap of deduction for category 1 but in case of a health insurance premium for senior citizen the overall limit rises to 50,000 now we come to category 2 category 2 covers medical expenditure which is incurred on the health of a senior citizen right so in the case of individual for each of the two buckets where the person is a senior citizen and the condition is that health insurance premium has not been paid so health insurance premium has not been paid that means uh, the medical expenditure is incurred because health insurance premium has not been paid so deduction is allowed on account of medical expenditure and the person should be an, a senior citizen in that case such expenditure is also covered and the limit of deduction for this category 2 is 50,000 why 50,000 because the person is a senior citizen now we aggregate the eligible deduction under both categories 1 and 2 both categories 1 and 2 in respect of individual bucket 1, individual bucket 2 and if HUF is concerned for the members of the HUF. The overall limit of deduction for 1 plus 2 that means the combined deduction limit under section 80D 
in the case of individual for bucket 1 is rupees 50000 for individual bucket 2 that is parents is again 50000 for huf it is 50000 who is a senior citizen an individual who is a resident in india non residents are not covered who is of the age of 60 years or more when at any time during the relevant previous year now as far as preventive health checkup is concerned there is an overall limit of deduction and this is the sublimit for preventive health checkup which is 5000 and this applies combined for self spouse children and parents the mode of payment where it is a case of payment for preventive health checkup it can be in any way it can be cash payment or in any other mode but as far as any other payment is concerned then it should not be in cash it can be in any other mode if it is in cash deduction is not allowed Sometimes lump sum premium is paid because insurance policy is in force for multiple years and premium is paid uh, one time at the beginning. So proportionate deduction for each previous year is allowed. And how do we compute it? We determine the amount paid and the total number of previous years comprised in what period? Which begins with the previous year in which the amount is paid and the subsequent previous years during which the insurance is in force and then we divide amount paid by the total number of such previous years that brings us to the deduction for each previous year section 80 dd 80 ddb and 80u provide for deduction on account of disability or medical treatment of specified diseases section 80 dd for maintenance and medical treatment of disabled dependent 80U for disability and 80DDB for medical treatment of specified diseases. The presentation is in a tabular format. So this will help you uh, in uh, understanding the comparative provisions as well. So we first look at 80DD. Deduction is allowed to an individual or HUF who is a resident. Conditions 1. The SSC has incurred expenditure for the medical treatment training and rehabilitation of whom of a dependent or two has deposited amount in an approved scheme of UTI, LIC or any other insurer for maintenance of a dependent. The deduction under ATDD is allowed to whom to the SSE making the payment not to the dependent. The question is who is a dependent? In the case of an individual it means the spouse, children, parents, brothers and sisters of the individual or any of them. In the case of HUF, it means a member of the HUF. But the conditions are that such person, one, should be a person with either disability or severe disability. So a disabled dependent. Should be wholly or mainly dependent on the SSE for his support and maintenance. So a dependent. And should not have claimed deduction under ATU because in that case, ATU is available not ATDD. What is the amount of deduction? In the case of a person with disability, it is a flat deduction of 75,000 irrespective of the amount of expenditure. In the case of a person with severe disability, flat deduction of 1,25,000. Disability means where the dependent, where the person is suffering from 40% or more disability. Severe disability means where he is suffering from 80% or more disability. The SSE should furnish copy of the medical certificate along with the return of income in order to claim the deduction. So this is 80DD. Now we come to 80U. This deduction is available to an individual who is a resident, not to an HUF. The SSE should be certified to be a person with disability or severe disability. The deduction is allowed to the disabled SSE, right? That means to the SSE himself not to any other person and the amount of deduction is the flat 75,000 or 1,25,000 same as ATDD. The condition of certificate also applies as it applies for ATDD. ATDDB for medical treatment of specified diseases. It is available to an individual or HUF who is a resident. What are the conditions? The SSE has paid for medical treatment of a specified disease for whom for self or dependent in the case of individual or for member of huf in the case of huf and the second condition is that the SSE should obtain prescription from a specified doctor 
deduction is allowed to such as se who is making the payment who is the dependent the list in the case of individual or huf is the same as that under 80 dd and the condition is that the person should be wholly or mainly dependent on the SSE for his support and maintenance. What is the amount of deduction? It is not a flat deduction. It depends on the amount of expenditure. So deduction is equal to amount paid. But there is a limit. What is the limit? It is 40,000. But this is enhanced to rupees 1 lakh where the amount paid in is in respect of a senior citizen. Who is a senior citizen? An individual who is a resident in India, not a non-resident, who is of the age of 60 years or more, when? At any time during the relevant previous year. Now this amount is further reduced. This amount is further reduced by what? By the amount if it has been received as insurance claim from an insurance company or it is reimbursed by the employer. Okay. So for example, 1,50,000 is the amount which has been spent in respect of a senior citizen. So the limit will be 1 lakh and say further uh, the insurance claim of say 40,000 has been received. So this 40,000 will be reduced further. So 60,000 will be the amount of deduction under 80 DDB. We will now move to deduction for interest on loan. 80 E, 80 double E, 80 double E A and 80 double E B. So loan is taken and interest. So deduction is allowed in respect of interest. ATE is for higher education, ATEE and ATEA is for residential house and ATEEB is for electric vehicle. Tabular presentation to help you uh, easily understand the comparative provisions as well. So we first look at ATE. It is allowed to an individual. The loan should be taken for pursuing higher education. Higher education. What is the meaning of higher education? It means any course of study after passing class 12th, after passing class 12th is higher education. Loan should be taken from a bank or notified financial institution or approved charitable institution. The higher education should be for whom? For either self or spouse or children or a student for whom the SSE is the legal guardian. Deduction is in respect of interest paid during the previous year. So deduction is on payment basis, not on due basis. And the deduction is allowed till a maximum of 8 previous years. From the previous year in which the SSE starts paying interest. So the year in which interest payment starts plus 7 subsequent previous years. There is no limit on the amount of deduction per year. So this is section 80E. Now ATEE and ATEEA, deduction is allowed to an individual. Loan should be taken for acquisition of residential house property from a bank or housing finance company. What are the conditions for ATEE? One, the loan is sanctioned during previous year 2016-17. Second, amount of loan is not greater than 35 lakh. Value of property is not greater than 50 lakh. An SSE does not own any residential house property on the date of sanction of the loan. <clears throat> the conditions become a bit different for ATEA. The first condition is that SSE should not be eligible for deduction under ATEE. So if the SSE is covered under ATEE, ATEA doesn't apply. This is first. Now, second condition, loan is sanctioned during previous year 2019-22-21-22. Okay. Third, SDV of residential house property is not greater than 45 lakh. And fourth, SSE does not own any residential house property on date of sanction of loan. So the difference between ATEE and ATEE is 1. ATEE applies where ATEE doesn't apply. Second, the previous year covered for sanction of a loan are different for ATEE and ATEE. Under ATEE, the amount of loan should not be more than 35 lakh. There is no condition under ATEE as in regard to amount of loan. In ATEE, the value of property should not be more than 50 lakh. ATEE, the SDV of property should not be more than 45 lakh. And the condition of not owning any property on the date of sanction of loan is the same for both the provisions. 
Now deduction is of interest payable during the previous year. So it is not allowed on payment basis but on due basis. And there is no limit on the duration. As against 8 years for uh, ATE, there is no limit on the duration for ATEE and ATEEA. For ATEE, the deduction is 50,000 per year, whereas for ATEE, it is 1,50,000 per year. Now, only acquisition of property is covered. If the loan is taken for renewal, repair, etc., it is not covered. What about repayment of principal? Interest deduction is covered under these provisions. Repayment of principal, the deduction is covered under section 80C. Now interest on capital borrowed is also allowed under 24B in computing income under the head income from house property. This deduction of interest is over and above what is allowed under uh, section 24B. 80WEB applies to an individual where loan is taken for purchase of an electric vehicle from a bank or NBFC. The only condition is that the loan should be sanctioned during previous year 2019-22-2022-23 and deduction is allowed on due basis. There is no limit on the duration of deduction and uh, the deduction per year is up to Rs. 1,50,000. The vehicle can be used for personal purposes or official purposes. It doesn't matter. The deduction is allowed. We will now see deduction for donations. ATG, ATGGA, ATGGB and ATGGC. First we look at ATG, donations to certain funds, institutions, etc. All SSEs are covered. The maximum deduction is at 50% or 100% of donations as specified. The total deduction under section ATG is equal to the aggregate of amounts computed in table A and table B. So amount computed in table A plus amount computed in table B. First, we look at table A. The deduction in respect of each item, there are several items as you can see in table A. Deduction in respect of each item is equal to amount of donation multiplied by the percentage specified in this table. And the percentages as you can see can be either 100% of the donation or towards the end there are four uh, categories eligible for 50%. We will quickly recap only the more important ones which uh, are relevant from an exam point of view although you should be aware of all these items in table A, right? So Chief Minister's Relief Fund or Lieutenant Governor's Relief Fund, 100%, right? Now there is this, there are these three items, three items uh, which you can remember with the acronym CM because they relate to chief minister's funds. Chief minister, chief minister, chief minister. Okay, so CM. Next, clean Ganga Kosh. The condition is that SSE should be a resident and the sum paid should not be uh, pursuant to the CSR expenditure under the Companies Act. Fund set up by a state government to provide medical relief to the poor. Now there are certain funds which are national in nature, so which have the word national and therefore you can remember by NAT. So some of these are National Children's Fund, National Cultural Fund, National Defense Fund, National Sports Fund, right? And certain other funds as well. All of these are entitled to 100%. Then there are three funds which use the word Prime Minister. So you can remember with PM. And uh, the important ones are Prime Minister, Citizen Assistance and Relief and Emergency Situations Fund which is popularly called as PMKS Fund. The Prime Minister's National Relief Fund. Then there is Swachh Bharat Kosh. The sum paid should not be pursuant to CSR under Companies Act. Now there are four items which are eligible for 50%. 50%. Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust, Jawaharlal Lal Nehru Memorial Fund, Prime Minister's Drought Relief Fund and Rajiv Gandhi Foundation. Acronym which you can use is Congress D. Congress, Indira Gandhi, Jawaharlal Lal Nehru, Rajiv Gandhi. And D is in addition because it is Prime Minister's Drought Relief Fund. So this is table A. So you need to compute 
द अमाउंट ऑफ डोनेशन इन टू द स्पेसिफाइड परसेंटेज फॉर ईच आइटम एंड एग्रीगेट दैट एंड दैट बिकम्स अ एग्रीगेट फॉर टेबल ए नाउ वी मूव टू टेबल बी डिडक्शन इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ ईच आइटम इज इक्वल टू अमाउंट ऑफ डोनेशन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय परसेंटेज स्पेसिफाइड इन द टेबल देर आर टू आइटम्स हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड द रेस्ट आर फिफ्टी परसेंट ओके हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ डिडक्शन ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ द डोनेशन इज प्रोवाइडेड इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ वॉट नंबर वन फॉर प्रमोटिंग फैमिली प्लानिंग बट द डोनेशन शुड बी टू द गवर्नमेंट और एन अप्रूव लोकल ऑथोरिटी इंस्टीट्यूशन और एसोसिएशन सेकेंड डोनेशन टू इंडियन ओलंपिक एसोसिएशन आई यू ए और एनी अदर नोटिफाइड स्पोर्ट्स एसोसिएशन और इंस्टीट्यूशन स्टैब्लिश इन इंडिया नॉट आउटसाइड इंडिया बट द कंडीशन इज दैट द एस एस सी मेकिंग द डोनेशन शुड बी अ कंपनी इफ सी द डोनेशन इज मेड बाई एन इंडिविजुअल देन इट इज नॉट अलाउड एज डिडक्शन इंडर ए टी जी एक्रोनेम विच यू कैन यूज इज एफ ओ एस टू रिमेंबर एंड बोथ दीज डोनेशन आर एलिजिबल फॉर हंड्रेड परसेंट डिडक्शन द रेस्ट आर एलिजिबल फॉर फिफ्टी परसेंट and there are five of them donation to a housing authority donation to a corporation established by the government for promoting interest of minority community which is notified donation for renovation or repair of what of a temple mosque gurudwara church or other place of worship which is notified which is notified next donation to a charitable fund or institution which is established in india and it satisfies the prescribed conditions so donations to a charitable fund or institution which is in india and finally uh, to the government or any local authority to be utilized for charitable purpose but not family planning why because family planning is separately covered in number 1 here these are entitled to deduction at the rate of 50% homitech is the acronym which you can use for quick remembering donations all of them which are listed in table b they are subject to a limit the aggregate of donations in table b cannot exceed the qualifying limit right so there is this upper cap what is the qualifying limit it is 10% of adjusted total income for that we need to compute adjusted total income what is that we first need to figure out the gross total income and then we need to reduce the following from the gross total income what capital gain which is taxable at a special rate that means either under 111a at 15% or long term capital gain under 112 at 20% or 112a at 10% second all deductions under chapter via from the gross total income but except under section 80g so except 80g all deductions under chapter via lastly income on which income tax is not payable under any provision of the act that is share from association of persons or body of individual so from the gross total income we reduce all these amounts 1 2 3 that gives us the amount of adjusted total income we compute 10% of that that becomes the qualifying limit the total donations in table b is subject to this particular limit once we figure out the total eligible donation then we apply these percentages of 100% of 50% to arrive at the uh, the deduction under table b and the final deduction under atg is the aggregate of amount that we compute in table a plus table b now no deduction is allowed under atg on two counts for donation which is in kind it is not allowed for donation of any sum which is more than 2000 if payment is made in cash it is not allowed next we have sections atgga atggb and atggc atgga for scientific research or rural development atggb and ggc for political parties first we look at atgga deduction is allowed to all the ssc so any ssc is covered and what are the eligible donations one some which is paid to a research association university college or other institution approved under section 35 for scientific research research in social science or statistical research recollect the discussion uh, in the topic on pgbp uh, the deduction under section 35 on account of scientific research expenditure second some paid to rural development fund national urban poverty eradication fund or association or institution engaged in rural development approved or notified under section 35 cca recollect 35 cca in the topic on pgbp 
both 35 and 35 CCA are deductions which are allowed in computing PGPP income. Therefore, if the gross total income includes business income, then deduction can be claimed under 35 and 35 CCA. And therefore, the condition to claim deduction under Section 80 GGA is what? Gross total income should not include income taxable under the head PGBP. Right? SSE having PGBP income can claim deduction under 35 or 35 CCA. Any sum which is exceeding rupees 2000 should not be paid in cash, otherwise, deduction will not be allowed. Deduction is equal to 100% of specified donation and there is no limit to the amount of deduction. Both ATGGB and ATGGC apply in respect of any sum contributed to a political party or an electoral trust. ATGGB applies only to an Indian company, but ATGGC applies to any person except local authority or artificial juridical person. The condition is that contribution should not be in cash. Deduction is of 100% of such contribution and there is no limit to the amount of deduction. We have noted in discussing the topic on PGBP that expenditure on any advertisement in souvenir, brochure, track, pamphlet or the like published by a political party is specifically disallowed under section 37.2b. Deduction is not allowed in computing PGBP income in the case of all the SSEs. But what about deduction under Section 80 GGB and 80 GGC from the gross total income in respect of such expenditure on advertisement? In the case of 80 GGB, that is in the case of an Indian company, this expenditure is covered. It is considered as a contribution. And therefore, an Indian company is allowed deduction from gross total income in respect of such expenditure. But this is not the case with 80 GGC. Therefore, any SSE which is not an Indian company is not allowed deduction in respect of such expenditure on advertisement. Now we move to deduction for rent and this is section 80 GG. An individual is eligible for deduction and the maximum deduction can be at the rate of 5000 per month. Four conditions need to be satisfied. One, SSE should not have income in the nature of house rent allowance HRA from his employer. Why? Because in that case, income will be taxable under the head salaries and exemption from HRA can be claimed there. Second, he should incur expenditure on payment of rent in respect of accommodation occupied by him for own residence. If this is not satisfied, then ATGG deduction cannot be claimed. Third, at a place where the SSE ordinarily resides or performs duties or carries on business or profession, any residential accommodation should not be owned at such place. By whom? By either the SSE or his spouse or minor child. Or the HUF if the SSE is a member of the HUF. Why? Because if you already have a residential house uh, in such place, what are you paying rent for? So no ATGG. As far as any other place is concerned, any residential accommodation should not be owned by the SSE at such place. Which accommodation? The annual value of which is taken as nil by virtue of it being a self-occupied property. Self-occupied property, SOP, the NAV is taken as nil. So you cannot take the benefit of nil NAV as well as ATGG deduction. Fourth, SSE should file a declaration in the prescribed form. What is the amount of deduction? It is lower of 1, 2 or 3. 1, 5,000 per month. 2, Expenditure incurred on payment of rent minus 10% of adjusted total income. 3. 25% of adjusted total income. Adjusted total income is what? Similar to what we saw in the case of ATGG. Gross total income and we reduce the following. <coughs> Capital gain taxable at special rate which is what? STCG under section 111A and LTCG under section 112 or 112A. Second. Deductions under chapter VIA are to be reduced except under ATGG. So except for ATGG, all other deductions under VIA chapter are supposed to be reduced. This is adjusted total income. Deduction on account of interest income is provided by sections ATTTA and ATTTB. ATTTA is available to an individual or HUF who is not referred under ATTTB. ATTTB applies to a senior citizen. Senior citizen means an individual who is a resident in India of age 60 years or more when at any time during the previous year. 
सो इफ द पर्सन इज अ सीनियर सिटीजन ए टी 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 बी अप्लाइज एल्स ए टी 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 ए अप्लाइज सो इन द केस ऑफ अ नॉन रेजिडेंट से फॉर से एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सेवेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ एज ही इज नॉट अ सीनियर सिटीजन ए टी 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 बी विल नॉट अप्लाई ए टी 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 ए विल अप्लाई नाउ अंडर सेक्शन ए टी 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 ए वॉट इज कवर्ड इंटरेस्ट ऑन डिपॉजिट इन सेविंग्स अकाउंट With a bank or cooperative bank or post office, therefore interest on time deposits is not covered. Time deposits, like fixed deposit or recurring deposit, so interest on deposits in savings account is only covered. A T T T B. What is covered? Interest on deposits with bank, cooperative bank or post office. Same three are covered, and therefore interest on savings account, time deposit or any other deposit is covered. Right. so attta only savings account attb all deposits the deduction under attta is up to a maximum of 10000 which is increased to 50000 in case of attb now in the case of interest on post office savings bank account in the topic on ifos we saw that it is exempt up to 3500 in the case of individual account or up to 7000 in the case of a joint account so first we need to figure out the amount of taxable interest we add that interest under the head ifos it then becomes part of the gross total income and then we allow deduction under section attta or attb for example if interest on post office savings bank account individual account is 13500 after 3500 exemption we include 10000 in the income under the head ifos then we allow deduction from the gross total income uh say under attta uh, or attttb of 10000 okay this is how we allow the deduction now as far as bank term deposit which is more than 5 years or 5 year post office time deposit is concerned we have seen in atc that the deposit qualifies as deduction under section atc okay so deposit is under atc and interest qualifies as deduction under section attttb not attta because attta applies only in case of interest on savings account we will now look at deductions for certain other incomes attjjaa attqqb and attrrb now there are certain points to keep in mind in respect of these deductions one deduction cannot exceed the income in respect of which the deduction is allowed right so these incomes will form part of gross total income which will include other incomes as well and the deductions will be allowed from the gross total income but <clears throat> we need to keep in mind that the deduction under these sections cannot exceed the income in respect of which the deduction is allowed deduction is not allowed unless the ssc furnishes return of income on or before the due date under section 13910 which is either 31st of july 31st of october or 30th of november and the ssc should make a claim for the deduction in such return of income this is the condition now as far as section 35 ad is concerned recollect the topic on pgbp right tax incentive under section 35 ad now deduction with respect to income of a specified business under section 35 ad can either be claimed here or under 35 ad deduction in respect of income cannot be claimed under 35 ad as well as under these provisions So now we look at ATJJAA employment of new employees, and there are five conditions to be satisfied. Gross total income should include profits and gains derived from business, so SSC should have PGBP income. SSC should be liable to tax audit. Business should not be formed by splitting up or reconstruction of an existing business. Business should not be acquired by way of transfer or as a result of any business reorganization. and the ssc should furnish the report of an accountant before the specified date referred under 44 ad that is specified date in the context of tax audit report so if these conditions are satisfied deduction under attjjaa is available and what is the quantum of deduction it is equal to 30% of additional employee cost which is incurred in the course of business in the previous year 30% of additional employee cost and deduction under section 80 jjaa is allowed for 3 previous years including the previous year in which the employment is provided so deduction for 3 previous years and deduction uh, for the previous year is 
30% of additional employee cost. So the question is what is additional employee cost? In the first year of a new business, in the first year of a new business, additional employee cost is equal to what? The emoluments, emoluments that are paid or payable to employees employed during that previous year because all the employees employed in that previous year will be new employees, right? So emoluments uh, paid or payable to the employees employed during that previous year is equal to additional employee cost. But in case of an existing business, that means a running business, additional employee cost is nil. So in effect, the deduction will not be provided. In which cases? One, where there is no increase in the number of employees as compared to the total number of employees as on 31st March of the preceding year. Right? So in effect, uh, there should be a net increase in the employees number of employees during the previous year. So if on 31st March of the preceding year, that means at the end of the preceding year, the number of employees are 100 and 10 employees resigned during the year, but 15 employees joined during the year. So there is the net increase of 5. There is a net increase on of 5. But if say no employee joins, that means there is no increase. There is no increase in the number of employees compared to 31st March of the preceding year. In that case, 80, 80 JJ AA deduction will not be allowed. Second, where emoluments are paid otherwise than by a specified mode. A specified mode is something that we have been referring to in the various provisions in this video. For example, if the emoluments are paid in cash, the deduction will not be allowed because that is not a specified mode. In both these cases, additional employee cost will be nil. If these negative conditions are not hit, then additional employee cost is the total emoluments paid or payable to whom? To the additional employees employed during the previous year. So if there were 100 employees at the beginning of the year, that is on 31st March of the preceding year, uh, 10 employees resign and 30 new employees join. Okay. So 20 is the number of additional employees. Emoluments paid to these additional employees will be the additional employee cost. How to determine who is an additional employee? So two conditions need to be satisfied. Additional employee means an employee who has been employed during the previous year and whose employment has the effect of increasing the total number of employees employed by the employer as on 31st March of the preceding year. So if on, th if on 31st March of the preceding year, 100 employees were there, 10 resigned during the year, but 30 joined, so 20, okay? So the effect of employment of 20 employees is that the number of in employees increases as compared to that on 31st March of the preceding year. So 20 are the number of additional employees. These are the additional employees. However, additional employee does not include the following employee in these four cases. One, whose total emoluments are more than 25,000 per month. Highly paid employees are not included. Two, for whom the entire contribution is paid by the government under the Employees Pension Scheme under the EPF Act. Third, an employee who is employed for less than 240 days during the previous year. Less than 240 days. Now, there is a benefit in respect of the business of manufacturing, not retail. Manufacturing of apparel, footwear, all other products. In that case, 240 days benchmark threshold is reduced to 150 days. But if such employee remains employed for at least 240 or 150 days in the succeeding year, then he is deemed to have been employed not in the year of employment but in the succeeding year and consequently deduction under ATAAA can be claimed from such succeeding year. And lastly, an employee who does not participate in the RPF is not considered as an additional employee. Finally, what do we mean by emoluments? So emoluments means sum which is paid or payable to an employee in lieu of his employment. But it does not include two things. One, employer's contribution to any pension fund or provident fund or any other fund for the benefit of the employee under any law for the time being in force. Employer's contribution to the employee welfare fund. Second, any lump sum payment to an employee at the time of either termination of service or superannuation or voluntary retirement such as 
वॉट ग्रेचुएटी सीवरेंस पे लीव एंड कैशमेंट वॉलेंटरी रिट्रेंचमेंट बेनिफिट कम्यूटेशन ऑफ पेंशन एक्सेट्रा दीज आइटम्स आर नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन द स्कोप ऑफ एमोलमेंट्स वी नाउ लुक एट डिडक्शन इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ रॉयल्टी इनकम ए टी क्यू क्यू बी अप्लाइज इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ रॉयल्टी एक्सेट्रा ऑफ ऑथर्स ऑफ सर्ट एंड बुक्स एंड ए टी आर आर बी इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ रॉयल्टी ऑन पेटेंट्स फर्स्ट वी लुक एट ए टी क्यू क्यू बी डिडक्शन इज एलिजिबल इन द केस ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल हु इज अ रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया एंड ही शुड बी एन ऑथर अ जॉइंट ऑथर इज ऑल्सो एलिजिबल वॉट इज द इनकम एलिजिबल फॉर डिडक्शन इनकम विच इज इन द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ प्रोफेशन ऑन टू काउंट वन either it is a lump sum consideration lump sum consideration which is received for what for assignment or grant of interest in the copyright right so if uh, the copyright has been assigned and a lump sum is received or interest in the copyright has been granted and a lump sum is received in respect of what in respect of any book book is what work of a literary artistic or scientific nature okay so this is count number 1 count number 2 the income in the nature of royalty or copyright fees in respect of such book right so lump sum consideration number 1 and royalty or copyright fees number 2 what is the quantum of deduction deduction from the eligible income which is included in the gross total income is equal to lower of eligible income or rupees 3 lakh so the cap of deduction is rupees 3 lakh okay but not the entire eligible income is allowed deduction we need to look at certain adjustments to be made to the eligible income and there are two adjustments which are required to be made number 1 where the royalty or copyright fees that means in number 2 here right where the royalty or copyright fees if it is a case of royalty or copyright fees if it is not a lump sum consideration in lieu of all rights in the book that means what does this mean that the royalty or copyright fees is a percentage of sales okay the gross income which is in excess of 15% of the value of books sold during the previous year is to be ignored and gross income means it is before allowing expenses attributable to such income so in simple terms what this means for example if there is royalty which the author is receiving on account of sale of the books as a percentage of sales then up to 50% is the eligible income beyond this it is to be ignored so if it is, so if the royalty is 20% then uh, beyond 15% that means 5% of royalty is to be ignored up to 50% is to be considered as part of eligible income the second adjustment which we need to make is if the income is earned outside india outside india then only so much of the income is taken into account as is brought into india in convertible foreign exchange within a limited period which is what 6 months from the end of the previous year in which the income is earned or a further period allowed by the reserve bank of india the point to note is that the book book when we talk about a book it does not include the following brochures commentaries diaries guides journals magazines newspapers pamphlets textbooks for schools tracts and other publications of similar nature by whatever name called now we look at section 80 rrb which is royalty on patents and it is also allowed to an individual who is a resident in india and who is a patentee a co patent is also allowed deduction the income should be in the nature of royalty in respect of a patent which is registered on or after 1st april 2003 under the patents act the deduction the quantum is the same as a tqqb deduction from eligible income included in gross total income is lower of eligible income of 3 lakh so the cap is 3 lakh but two adjustments are supposed to be made to the eligible income one if the income is taxable as capital gain at rrb is not to be allowed it is to be excluded from the eligible income or if there is a sale if the income is from sale of what of a product which is manufactured which is manufactured using the patented process or article using this patent for commercial use that is also excluded that is also not part of eligible income the second adjustment which we need to make is the same on account of receipt of income in convertible foreign exchange it is the uh, same as that we saw in the case of at qqb finally there is a summary which you can see on this screen it's a beautiful summary and gives a very 
compact and condense a snapshot of whatever we have discussed in this topic on reduction from gross total income. Since we have already discussed those provisions, we are not going to take a look at this summary again. This is part of the tax book and this is also part of uh, the document used in this video. So you can uh, take a look at this summary at your own end. It will be very, very useful to you.